Anthony, what's happening, man? What's going on? Oh, you're trying to weld some aluminum? Oh, dude, welding aluminum's easy, man. You've never done it before? Ah, I don't know, it's not that hard. You don't know what the welding settings are? Tell you what, why don't I make a video and show you how to weld aluminum? Today we're talking about TIG welding, and specifically, TIG welding aluminum, and more specifically, TIG welding 5000 series aluminum. Why 5000 series aluminum, you ask? Because it's the boat builder's aluminum of choice. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. That really helps me get the content out there to others who might enjoy it. If you want to support the channel, Adventure Marine sells propeller guards, DAVA systems, and motor brackets. I will put a link in the description below with a discount code so you can cash in on some savings. Hmm. 1.5% lathinated, 2% thorinated? What do I need for this? Hmm. At least this looks simple enough. AC TIG or DC TIG? I know I want to do AC because that's what I need for aluminum. Okay, full disclosure time here. When Anthony called me, he had one of those old stick machines. You know, the one that does stick and TIG and it's got a million freaking dials on it and do we need pulse? Are we using high frequency? Is it low frequency? Just all these little switches. Okay, I'll, guys, I'll be honest. In the modern world, with a new machine, like the one that I have, the Dynasty 280, it's literally pretty much two settings. You're on AC or DC. So for me, it's really freaking easy. Don't tell Anthony though, he has no clue how to set up his machine and neither do I to be honest with you. So for this, we're gonna focus on AC, which is basically like a high frequency welding. And Miller, in all its glory, makes things even easier for you. They give you these great little cheat sheets. This is another thing you don't have to tell your friends about by the way. So, up in this little area here. So they've actually packed a lot of information into this sheet, which is really quite useful. As you can see, if you take the time to read through the tungsten types, that's the 1.5 to 2% lathinated or the thorinated, they're both, they both can be used for DC and AC welding. So don't get too hung up guys into the type of tungsten to use. I know a lot of welders will tell you, oh, you have to use thorinated or you have to use lathinated. I think everybody just develops their own thing, but realistically I've used both and they both produce good welds. So I mean, don't get too hung up on it. guys it's really hard to get the lighting and everything right in here to show you this so hopefully you can kind of see uh, what I'm trying to do here so I'm not grinding my tungsten straight onto the wheel like this I'm actually going to be in about a 15 to 25 degree angle and I'm near the top of the wheel and I'm supporting it in a cordless drill I use that for the rotation and I'm just going to use my finger to support the, the tungsten right here so this is what it looks like. Don't have to do much. Just clean it up. Put a nice little angle on there. And away we go. So I guess it wouldn't be much of a, a welding video if we didn't just do some welding. So we've got our tungsten in here. I'm using a gas lens inside with a number 8 cup. Now there's lots of different things you can do there. Uh, I think for this video we'll just, just keep it simple, so just use what you have. Uh, we use a smaller cup because a lot of what I have to do is getting into small little places. Gas coverage maybe isn't as good as you'd get with a bigger cup, but for this it's going to work just fine. You can get really technical on the stick out amount. Some people like to measure it. I just kind of eyeball it for what works for me. 
It depends on what I got to get into. If I got to reach down inside of something, I'm going to have it stick out a little bit more. If I'm going to be doing a T-joint like we are today, I can get away with having it in a little bit closer. Okay guys, other super important tool that every TIG welder must have when you're welding aluminum or stainless, but really important with aluminum, get yourself a little brush and you're going to want to brush that layer of oxidization off. So aluminum oxidizes very quickly, so it's really important you just clean that top layer. I just give these a nice little clean. Don't have to go super crazy, just clean that oxidization off. Once you get it tacked up, you can give it a little bit more too. It's a little easier to get in there. Okay, so let's do this. I'm running 160 amps, which might be a little bit low. Or maybe a bit high. This is 1 8 aluminum, 5000 series. Let's tack the corners and see what we get. So, <clears throat> I think the hardest thing about welding aluminum, aluminum transfers heat extremely quickly. So the reason you need so much amperage is basically to get the initial weld pool started, guys. So there's gonna be an initial hit on the pedal and you're gonna start to heat that material up and all of a sudden it's gonna liquefy very fast and you're gonna start to have to move very quickly and you may even have to back off the pedal a little bit. And the whole time, you're gonna be feeding a lot of filler rod in order to kind of cool that weld pool. So it's quite a balance with aluminum between, if you feed too slow, the, ro the filler rod melts before it even gets into the weld pool. If you don't feed it fast enough, that weld pool really heats up and you start to melt through really quick. So when you're building a boat, especially when you're welding very thin aluminum like this, it's very hard to control the, the speed at which you, um, you're either too cold or too hot. Things happen really quick. You'll learn how to move fast. You gotta learn how to feed, feed that rod as you go. So I like to keep my filler rod angle fairly low and kind of and sneak my filler rod into the pool. Find if I'm a little too high up it starts to melt before it gets there. So you're going to be a little lower angle on the filler material. And for your tungsten, uh, 15 degrees or a little bit more seems to work really good. And you want to get in there right in that T, that T joint. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. So here we're just warming up the aluminum, getting that bolt and puddle started. Ready to dip our filler rod. Here we go. It happens pretty fast. And slowly let it off. If you let off too fast, you're going to form a crack in the aluminum. So, this is the first one. It actually didn't work out very good. So, what you can see happened here. I didn't get this one on film, but I just want to show you what happens when you have contamination. So where did that contamination come through if I brushed everything? Well, pretty standard boneheaded move for me. I left the plastic on the backside. So you can see the plastic back there. And that actually came through. So when we melted through, it sucked some of that plastic in. And that's what caused that blowout. So that's why it's really important to keep things clean or just not be an idiot. These ones turned out pretty good. So these are the two welds that we did. And they turned out not half bad. So, oh, kind of hard to see. There you go. On the back side, underneath, just really hard to see. That little bit of discoloration is the penetration. So, you know, with that eighth inch aluminum, then you're gonna find this when you're building your boat. It's really easy to burn through just like 
that. And now you've got all kinds of problems. So we didn't have proper adhesion between the two pieces. We had too much heat in the upper, the upper piece and not enough in the lower one. And we had bad fusion, that's a bad weld. This one, not too bad. So guys, I kind of want to wrap this up fairly quick. I said I was going to talk about 5000 series aluminum. So this is, that's primarily aluminum used for building boats. What does that mean? It means you've got to use a appropriate filler rod to go with that. So in this case, we're using 5356, and this is a 332 diameter. That's the rod that you want to use for 5000 series. Don't be mixing different filler rods. So make sure you have a look on the little flat section on the back and actually make sure you're putting the right stuff into the weld pool. I hope this video helped you learn a little bit about TIG welding aluminum. If it didn't and it was a complete waste of your time, then give me a huge thumbs down and tell me why it sucked. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, write me a comment, uh, tell me what you liked about it and what you want to see in the future from me. I want to do more of these videos to help you guys. My goal is to inspire you to go and build a boat of your own. It's super fun, it's incredibly difficult, but unbelievably satisfying to actually complete it. So, I've done two now. I'm looking at building a third boat, hopefully at the beginning, hopefully in the new year in spring. And let me know what you think I should build. I'm looking at an 18 foot design right now. I just did a 16 and I think it'd be a pretty sweet boat. So tell me in the comments what you want to see from me. Guys, get back out there, live your adventure. Let's get back to it.